So we completed last day. We come. We got the basic idea of how sex is basically determined in case of Drosophila, where in case of Drosophila, it is the X by A ratio. If it is one, where the flies are fertile females. But if the X by A ratio is 0.5, the flies are fertile males. And this concept was proposed by Kelvin Bridges in 1926, famously known as his unique balance concept. Now the question automatically arises that how can a ratio of X to A at the molecular level determine the sex of the fly? So we move on to that. Now, as we started our class today, that X by A ratio, if one, it is a female, fertile female. If X by A ratio 0.5, then we have a fertile male. Now let us concentrate. Since in females, the X by A ratio is one, then we can assume that there are two X chromosomes and two autosomes. Now, it is known that on the X chromosomes are the sisterless numerator genes, cis A, cis B, and cis C. On the autosome is the deadpan denominator gene. So we have a set of genes on the X chromosome and a set of genes on the autosome. Once more, the genes on the X chromosome are referred to as the numerator genes because in the ratio X by A, X is the numerator, a is the denominator. So it is referred to as the numerator genes, which is cis A, B, and C. And on the autosome, or, uh, which is referred to as a denominator, the denominator gene is jetpack. Now, if you look at the molecular level, since there are two X chromosomes and two autosomes, and the number of genes on the X chromosomes are more, hence the gene product of the X chromosome is more. So we are having here in this particular picture, the red color balls are the gene products of the X chromosome and the blue color balls are the gene products of the autosome. So you can assume that in a female, as you can see from the picture also, that the number of products of the X chromosome are more as compared to that of the products of the autosome. Now, what happens are this, uh, is that in females, if there are excess numerator subunits as compared to denominator subunits. Now these proteins can form homodimers with each other or heterodimers with the gene products of the autosome. So if you look into this picture, as I said, the red color are the gene products or the protein products of the X chromosome and the blue color are the protein products of the autosome. And again, as I said, that the red colored balls can homodimerize or it can homodimerize with the blue color balls. So these protein subunits can form either homodimer, so we can have a red, red homodimer or a red, blue heterodimer. In case of females, since the numerator gene product is more as compared to the denominator gene product, hence we are having numerator, numerator, homodimer. This numerator, numerator, homodimer. So the products of the X chromosome genes are forming homodimers. So these homodimers act as transcription factors. Just a second. These homodimers act as transcription factors and they can recognize the promoter element of another important gene that plays a vital role in sex determination, that is the SXL. So you can see the numerator, numerator homodimers have recognized the promoter element of the SXL gene. The SXL gene has two promoter, early promoter and late promoter. Now these transcription factors recognize the early promoter and facilitate the synthesis of the SXL early protein or the SXL protein. We'll come to the, the differentiation of early and later, later later on. But for now, let us be let us understand the fact that once these transcription promoters, uh, transcription factors are sitting on the promoter element of the SXL gene, 
we are getting the SXL protein and this SXL protein then further controls the female sex determination pathway. However, if we look into the case of the male, as you can see, male has one X chromosome and a set of autosomes, that is two autosomes. So since a copy of X chromosome is not present in male, only one copy is present. So the gene products of the X chromosome is comparatively less as compared to the gene products of the autosome, which are the blue bonds. Since the gene products of the X chromosome are comparatively less as compared to the autosomal gene products, no numerator gene product homodimer is formed. As you can see, we do not get any red, red balls. So no homodimerization has occurred. What we are seeing is that the X chromosome gene product heterodimerizes with the autosomal gene product. No X chromosomal gene product homodimerization is observed because of low because of missing of an X chromosome. One X, only, there is only one X chromosome. As there is no homodimerization, we are not seeing any red red balls. Obviously, it is. It can be said that the SXL gene cannot be activated. Because as you can see, if you compare the picture, this red, red homodimers were transcription activators or transcription factors. Now, in absence of this transcription factors, in case of males, the SXL gene cannot be activated. And in males, there is no SXL protein produced. And since there is no SXL protein produced, as a result of which, the, in absence of the SXL protein, what we observe is the main sex determination pathway. So at the molecular level, this is how the XA ratio becomes important in determining whether the fly will be a female or whether the fly will be a male. The X by A ratio also determines whether the SXL protein will be produced, if produced a female fly, if not produced, it's a male fly. So once we are thorough with this basic concept that X by A ratio, if one produces the SXL protein as a result of which we are having a female uh, pathway. And if the X by ratio, A ratio is less than one, that's 0 0.5, then we are having a path. There is the uh, no presence of the SXL protein and the flies that we are ob obtaining are the male flies. Now, let us look into this scenario. Let us consider the first one that is early embryogenesis. So there are two states. One is the early embryogenesis and the late embryogenesis. So we are now concentrating on early embryogenesis. And we are also concentrating on the fact that this is a female fly. And if this is a female fly, then we are also aware of the fact that the numerator numerator gene products have homodimerized to form the transcription factor. So this is something we have already studied from the previous slide. Now, as I said I, in the previous slide, that the SXL gene has two promoter elements. One is the early promoter, which is written as PE here, and the other is the late promoter, which is represented as PL. So we'll concentrate on this picture for the time being. So let us look into this XL gene. So it has an early promoter and it has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight exons. So whenever there is this female fly and the numerator and numerator transcription factor is present available, this transcription factor recognizes the early promoter and transcribes the mRNA from the early promoter onwards. So we have this primary transcript. We are having the early promoter, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and under, and now what we are having in the presence of the, um, uh, under the influence of the transcription factor, that is the numerator, numerator transcription factor, we are getting the SXL mRNA and splicing is occurring to produce the mature mRNA. And what we are observing is that we are observing the SXL early protein. 
So keep it in mind that if there is this SXX female, there are two chromo X chromosomes, higher dose of numerator gene products, numerator, numerator transcription factor formed, numerator, numerator transcription factor can recognize the early promoters, brings about the transcription of the uh, sequences downstream of the early promoter to produce the SX cell pre-mRNA, which is now spliced to produce the SX cell early protein. Keep it in mind that this phenomena happens only in females during early embryogenesis because in males, there is no numerator, numerator transcription factor. So the phenomena of production of SX cell protein is applicable or, or in case of females only. We do not get this phenomena in males. Now we move on to late embryogenesis. Later in embryogenesis, this is a default mechanism. Default mechanism means if nothing happens automatically, this process will start. So imagine the scenario of males, nothing has happened till then. So automatically what happens, transcription starts of the same SX cell gene. As you can see, transcription of the same SX cell gene now starts from the late promoter. And from the late promoter, the uh, sequences are transcribed to produce the pre-mRNA. Now, this is important. Now, when this pre-mRNA is produced, there is a stop codon present in exon three. In case of males, remember, there is no SX cell early protein. Only in case of females, we are having the SX cell early protein. So as you can see that in later in embryogenesis, when the pre-mRNA is produced, we are seeing that in exon three, there is a stop codon. Now what happens? In females, the SX cell protein that has been produced causes regulated splicing. So this SXL early protein, this pathway, the blue box highlighted pathway is applicable for both males and females. In males, we do not have any prior SXL early protein. In females, we have already a prior SXL early protein. So I'm talking about the females first. So in females, since this SXL early protein has already been produced, so under the influence of this SXL early protein, a regulated splicing is occurring in case of females. So in presence of this SXL early protein, as a result of this regulated splicing, look at the mRNA that is obtained. So three is removed. So we are having two, four, five, six, seven, eight. So under the influence of SXL early protein, the pre-mRNA of the SXL late protein is regulated by, regulated by the early protein and accordingly spliced to give the SXL late protein. But interestingly, as I said, we have to imagine that there is no, in case of males, there is no SXL early protein. So in case of males, the scenario starts from here itself. So in case of males, we are having this pre-mRNA with a stop codon in exon three. Since there is no SXL early protein, then automatically in males, the whole of the mRNA is produced. And as you can see, since there's a stop codon in exon three, so automatically the ribosome machinery will not be able to produce any functional product here. So we can say that SXL early protein induces the production of SXL late protein. But in males, there was no SXL early protein. So accordingly, in males, we do not have any SXL late protein also. Now, now we are horror about the fact that in females there are two X chromosomes, as a result of which we are having numerator-numerator transcription factor. 
And in the presence of this numerator, numerator transcription factor, we are having the presence of the SXL early protein. Since there is this production of early protein, we are seeing that in case of females, regulatory splicing is occurring under the ages of the SXL early protein to produce the SXL late protein. So that is a phenomena that has occurred in females. Until now, we have understood that in females, SXL late protein has been produced. If you look into the scenario of males, from the very beginning, no numerator, no numerator uh, dimer, dimerize, uh, dimers available. In absence of no numerator, numerator dimers, no SXL early protein, no SXL late protein. So till now, the scenario for us is that in females, we are having a SXL late protein. In males, there is no functional product till now from the SXL gene. So that is the scenario till now. Now we are coming to another gene, which is known as the transformer gene. So if we look into the transformer gene, we are seeing that there are three exons and exon two, when coded into an mRNA, also has a stop codon preceding it. Now let's start with the tragene or the transformer gene. So this is the tragene. And as you can see, when this tragene will be transcribed into the pre-mRNA, you can see that there is a stop codon present in exon two. Now what happens? The prior scenario is that there is no SXL protein in females. Sorry, very sorry. The prior scenario is that there is SXL late protein in females and there is no SXL protein in males. Now we have a tra gene product, tri-mRNA, with a stop codon in exon two. So in females, what happens? Let's look into that. So in females, what happens is that in presence of this SXL late protein, regulator splicing is again occurring as a result of which we are getting a functional tra protein. So regulator splicing is occurring the stop codon area is being removed and we are getting a functional mRNA and we are getting a functional tra protein, as you can see. But in case of males, if you remember the scenario, no SXL late protein. So if there is no SXL late protein, then this whole pre-mRNA is transcribed as it is to produce a mature mRNA where stop codon is present in exon two. And because of the presence of the stop codon, the ribosomal machinery is not able to produce any functional product. So in case of males, we are not having any functional product of the TRA gene. So there is no product of TRA protein in case of males. So till now, if I summarize, we are having numerator, numerator transcription factor, SXL early protein, SXL late protein, and tra protein in females. Till now in males, nothing. No protein product has been produced. So with this background knowledge that in females till now, the tra protein has been produced and in males till now, no protein has been produced. We move on to the next slide. That is the final decision, whether the, how the fly becomes a female fly and the fly becomes a male fly. Now, what we have done till now is that in case of, uh, this is the gene, this is the double sex gene. This is the final gene that controls the final development of the male or the female fly. And this is the, the mRNA produced from the double sex gene. Now, interestingly, there should be two things you should keep in mind is that in case of females, the ratio was X by A1. Hence, in case of females, we have the tra protein already present. In case of, okay, uh, let's go back to that one. Tra protein already present. Now, if I look into the mRNA of the double sex gene, you will see that 
there are two poly A sides. If you remember your concept of central dogma, and if you remember that when a primary transcribed transcript produced a mature transcript, one of the final processing of the mRNA was to add poly A tail. And there were signals present in the mRNA which indicated that now the poly A tail will be added, polyadenylation. So if you look into this mRNA, there are two sites where the poly A tail can be added. One site is the site after exon 4, that is there is a poly A signal here, so that polyadenylation can be, can be started after exon 4. And another signal is present at exon 6, where again polyadenylation can start after exon 6. So there are two different poly A sites. As we have studied till now, that in case of females, we have the tra protein present. So under the influence of the tra protein, as you can see, since there is the presence of the tra protein, in case of females, tra regulated splicing gives rise to the female DSX mRNA. So you can see that uh, the splicing is occurring under the ages of the tra protein. And as a result, we are getting an spliced product of exon 1, 2, 3, 4 with the polyadenylation. This is a female specific double sex protein. Now this is a transcription factor. This particular protein is a transcription factor that represses male specific gene expression in all cells. Once more, this is a transcription factor that represses male specific gene expression in all cells. As a result of the product of production of this protein, what happens? Female specific somatic cell differentiation occurs. So the fly now becomes a female fly. But in case of males, as, you, as we have studied till now, the ratio is 0 0.5. So by now, there is no tra protein. So there's no tra protein present in males. If there is no tra protein present in males, as I showed you that there are two poly A sites. Since there is no tra protein present in males, so this poly A site cannot be taken into consideration. Automatically for males, the exon 6 poly A signal is recognized. And in case of males, the default splicing occurs to produce a mature mRNA containing all the six exons and the polyadenylation site. Now, the mRNA encodes the DSX N protein or the male protein, which is again a transcription factor that represses female specific gene expression in all cells. Now, as a result of this male specific somatic cell, as a result of this protein, as you can see, male specific somatic cell differentiation occurs. So thus we have, just a second. Uh, if you look into the red line, that is the female, X by A ratio one, production of the tra protein, Regulated splicing under the control of the tra protein, resulting in the production of the DSXF uh, protein F mRNA, resulting in the production of the DSXF protein. If you look into the blue blue uh, arrows, the X by A ratio is zero point five, so it's a no tra protein, and default splicing of the DSX free mRNA to produce the mature mRNA, which produces the DSXM protein. So this is the final deciding protein that decides that the fly will become a female or a male fly. For the fly to become a female fly once more, all the genes expressing male products are switched off. And for the fly to become a male fly, this protein facilitates the switching off of all the genes that produces any female gene products. And accordingly results in the somatic cell differentiation. So this is to summarize whatever I studied today. 
Uh, we started with X by A ratio, where the production of the numerator numerator transcription factors occurred, under the influence of which we got the SXL early protein, followed by the production of the SXL late protein. And then in the, with the, under the influence of the SXL late, uh, late protein, we got the regulated spicing of the tra protein in case of females. If we look into the scenario of males, the male ratio is 0 0.5. So from the very beginning, there was this absence of the numerator numerator transcription factors and no SXL early or late protein, no tra protein. So when this scenario has occurred, then what happens under the regulated control of the tra protein, the female, female DSX F protein is produced, which results in the production of the female fly. As I said, this protein represents male specific gene expression, results in female somatic cell differentiation, and we are having a female fly. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But if we look into the male fly pathway, no tra protein. So default splicing of the DSX pre-mRNA, we are getting the DSX M protein, which represses female specific gene expression resulting in male somatic cell differentiation. So this is how, so in a simplified pathway manner, this picture, this, this slide summarizes how a female fly and how a male fly is produced based on preliminary, if, whether the X by A ratio is one or the X by A ratio is 0.5. So this is a molecular mechanism underlying that basic ratio of one and 0.5. This is another simplified picture. This is another uh, diagrammatic simplified picture showing you the pathway or leading to female fly, which I've discussed in details. And this is another di diagrammatic picture showing you the pathway leading to the male fly, which we have discussed in detail today. So with this, we'll stop our class for today.